Recently, there have been a lot of news articles about Kara Gaucher, an elite long-distance runner, being diagnosed with a rare neurological disorder called runner's dystonia. I'm a neurologist, and I'm going to explain what runner's dystonia is. For those who don't know, Kara Gaucher, pictured here, is an elite marathoner. She won the silver medalist in the world championship and has been to the Olympics multiple times and has a long and storied career. And she posted about her diagnosis on Instagram. I blew it up a little bit on MSP paint just so I could read it here and she says for the past year I have been quietly battling for my health after a fall in December 2020 I had a hard time staying on my feet while out running it felt like I was slipping and it was scary I'd throw my arms out for balance after falling while crossing a road into traffic Adam who's her husband made me go to my doctor this led me to a neurologist who discovered lack of sensation in my legs and lesions in my brain so a couple of things here sensory changes are not associated with runner's dystonia or any form of dystonia so that may be a red herring and lesions on the brain are actually not associated with her condition task specific dystonia so both of those may have been red herrings I had a lumbar puncture which is a spinal tap, a procedure where a needle is inserted into the low back to draw out spinal fluid, a test usually done to diagnose multiple sclerosis. And she says that was negative for MS. So a lot of people can have white matter lesions in the subcortical white matter, and sometimes they can be confused for being consistent with multiple sclerosis. The image you're looking at, the MRI on the bottom, is clearly consistent with multiple sclerosis. The MRI scans on the top show lesions that are in the subcortical white matter, but they're smaller and poorly demarcated and known as so-called unidentified bright objects or UBOs that aren't really specific for any particular neurological disease, so maybe just speculate that she had these benign white matter lesions, but because of her symptoms, they wanted to see if she had multiple sclerosis. So my doctor encouraged me to get back outside, and slowly I started to feel better. This fall, the symptoms came back in a more intense way. I started drifting to the left and falling again. A brain scan showed no changes, and I began to struggle to walk outside. So imagine a professional elite runner struggling to walk. Unable to control my legs or have confidence, they would stay planted. I saw a new neurologist, and she gave me an EMG. The test diagnosed neuropathy in my hands and feet. So again, neuropathy is a disease of the small peripheral nerves. It has nothing to do with multiple sclerosis and nothing to do with task-specific dystonia, so that may again be a red herring. She got me in to see a neurological movement disorder specialist. So a movement disorder specialist would be the perfect person to see to diagnose this sort of disorder. I should point out that I'm actually a multiple sclerosis immunology specialist, though I have seen many cases of task-specific dystonia in my career. He diagnosed me with focal dystonia, and she goes on to say that it was runner's dystonia. And she goes on to say that she's been advised to run less so that her condition will approve, to drastically cut back so that the condition won't interfere with her walking. And so I wish Kara a rapid recovery. It's really unfortunate to see her dealing with this, but hopefully she gets better quickly. So in general, what is dystonia? Dystonia refers to sustained muscle contraction. And there are a couple of common examples. One of them is writer's cramp. You're trying to write and you're holding the pen or pencil and then you have difficulty opening up your hand afterwards and maybe you have to use your other hand to help out. Another common dystonia is torticollis, where the muscles in your neck are contracting and pulling your neck to one side. And sometimes this can be treated with Botox injections. So these are a few common forms of dystonia. Dystonia is interesting in that there's really no objective change in MRI scans of the brain, even though there's very strong evidence that the disorder is coming from the brain. People have demonstrated this based on functional MRI scans. And there are certain genetic conditions that actually cause dystonia. But Kara has something very specific, which in the broad sense is known as task-specific dystonia. So that is having dystonia or sustained muscle contraction 
in the setting of performing a very specific task. And this usually happens in the upper extremities, not in the legs, and it usually happens with activities that are done over and over and over again. So I'll give you a few examples from my clinical practice. I had a patient who was a harpist and he played a special instrument and he had to curl his fingers in a certain way but after doing it for years, if not decades, he would start to play and his fingers would start contracting and he wouldn't be able to play and he had to come up with alternate ways to hold the instrument. Uh, we've had patients who play blowing instruments and when they try to blow, their mouth contorts. And we've seen various examples of musicians and it makes sense for musicians because they're performing a very specific task over and over again. Now task specific dystonia is also known in a lot of professional sports and in baseball and golf it's often known as the yips. So the yips is when you're performing usually a throwing motion in sports and you get sustained muscle contraction. One example of this is Steve Sachs who is a slick fielding baseman in the past for the Los Angeles Dodgers. He was in fact the person on deck when Gibson hit his famous home run in the World Series I believe. But he was a really good fielder, but he had this period where he had great difficulty throwing to first base. He would overthrow the ball, and he presumably had the condition yips, where he was trying to throw, and because he just performed so many throws in his career, he somehow rewired his brain and got these sustained muscle contractions and could not throw properly. And this can occur with outfielders and sometimes infielders like Steve Sachs, and it can also occur with pitchers, and sometimes it can be a career-ending change. Now, for a lot of forms of task-specific dystonia, like torticollis or dystonic tremor, we can use Botox injections, but of course, Botox, botulinum toxin injections, can cause weakness, so I think it would be difficult to use Botox to treat an athlete because as a side effect, they might have weakness of the arm. And so often this kind of thing can be career ending depending on the severity. And in golf, people can get what is also called the yips where they're trying to hold a golf club and they get a lot of tightening in their arms and that can also make it very difficult to golf. Now some people use the term yips to refer to something different, which is more of a psychological thing. They sort of lose confidence in their ability to throw accurately. And that's not really the true yips. That that's more like choking, you know, just sort of losing confidence in yourself. And the difference between yips and just regular choking, what a lot of athletes could experience, is this sort of sustained abnormal muscle contraction when they're trying to perform the movement. So what exactly is runner's dystonia? Well, runner's dystonia, runners, just like many other athletes, are performing the same sort of motion over and over again. And they can get abnormal movements of the lower extremities, such as the feeling of pulling the leg inwards. And some runners have described their leg as pulling inwards and sort of bumping into the other leg. And Kara seems to describe this unusual stiffness and incoordination, which presumably begins as she's starting to run but it at one point apparently became more severe and was even affecting her walking. Now let me point out that runner's disorder dystonia is extraordinarily rare. I have never seen a single case in my entire career and prior to filming this video I just walked down the hall and talked to several other neurologists and all of them said they have not seen a single other case in their entire career. So I feel really bad for her because this is just a fluke thing. We don't really know any of the risk factors for this disorder except performing a repetitive task and obviously the overwhelming majority of people performing repetitive tasks do not develop this rare condition, particularly for something like running, just because it's the lower extremities and not the upper extremities, and presumably our body is very, very adapted to running because it's sort of a normal motion, unlike playing a musical instrument or throwing darts or throwing a baseball, that kind of thing. Uh, but anyways, I hope the video was interesting. If you have any comments or suggestions for future videos, please post in the comments below. And again, I wish Kara a rapid recovery.